centralized uh, distributed uh, development process. And uh, um, that means that we um, have to switch from subversion to another um, tool, but that's um, it involves much more, many more different things than not just that. And um, just to um, <coughs> some reasons that, I mean, subversion, the current tool is uh, kind of, well, it's better than uh, CDS, but it is uh, somewhat slow, especially one notices that um, when you use, when you're using other tools like it or Google. And um, it doesn't really work uh, if you're working with branches. I mean, like merging is really painful, and it doesn't, it's not only painful, but um, like with things like repeated merges, when you um, well, have to pull stuff from the trunk in, or don't really work. They, they tend to cause more work than would actually be required. And of course, you can't commit locally. Like if you, if you don't have a network connection, you can't commit. So that means um, you end up <coughs> large-ish commits that uh, include several different changes, and you just then commit that to trunk. And it's just one big thing. Then. Um, we had a really, really long discussion about where to go from subversion, and we've chosen it. Why that? That's basically because um, Bazaar uh, is one tool that uh, we've tried and it doesn't really work. I mean, it, it, it works, but it's slow and not very reliable. There's a lot of positive talk about it by Ubuntu, the Ubuntu guys, because they're using it. But um, must the tool doesn't, sorry? They must use it. They must use it, <laughs> yes. They are a tool of choice, or tool of force, or whatever. And um, it doesn't, well, it, when we tried it, it doesn't didn't really, uh, really work. The Kugel, of course, is good. Um, it just has one problem that it doesn't support uh, revision tags, like, um, which means it doesn't support um, tagging many, many different. Uh, change sets, like, the, uh, like it is a given with subversion. Every change that has a number in subversion, and you want to stick with that. And Mercurial does have uh, change set numbers, but they are repository specific. So you have different numbers on the server than you have on your own repository. So you can't use those numbers to communicate. And Git is pretty much, well, the same, it works pretty much uh, similar to Mercurial, and it can be made to work with revision tags. We need to add them, I mean, to add hook scripts uh, that create them, but we, uh, it can be made to work. It has some drawbacks, like you have to pack all those tags, but usually it won't be a problem. Like, the server will do that for you. And, um, that's a typical uh, setup uh, that you have with subversion. You have the server repository with all the standard tags, the revision numbers, um, subversion automatically gives us. You have the checkout uh, to get the whole thing over, the updates, and um, the merge process, which goes across the network, which makes it so slow. And, um, well, Every commit, every change goes across the network. And like in this example on the, on the client, there are two checkouts, one version of trunk and another one of some other branch. And just one checkout of trunk is uh, 1.5 gigabyte uh, large, which is a pretty hefty thing, especially if you compare it to um, the same thing we would get. We have well, pretty much the same server. With the only difference that these tags are generated explicitly. You clone whole repositories, which means all this, every revision, every history goes 
on your on your client machine, and um, you then check out a specific um, uh, change set, a specific revision that you want to work on, or just build, and you can merge between different change sets and different uh, different branches. And the fun thing is that it's well a bit more than half the size. Uh, of a subversion checkout, <coughs> although that it contains all the branches and all the um, um, all the history. And of course, if you uh, haven't actually drawn, uh, you commit into this repository from here, basically you go there, and if you've done a feature, or if you get the feeling that you've done, you're done with a certain feature, then supposedly you push that feature to the server. You don't um, really, you don't mm -hmm. give a message with that. You still put commit messages to every single commit, and you just can um, you push it to the server. It just means um, all the change sets get transported. Yeah, revision tags in the distributed uh, version control system, yes, uh, we had a very, very long, and not, not one, we had several long discussions about that, if that is a good idea or if it's not. Um, well, why not use the hash IDs? Basically, hashes, they work, but they are long. You usually need to copy and paste. There are ways around that. You have short hashes. But not every instance where you have, uh, where you well use the tool. Not every browser, not every big tool uses the short versions. So sometimes you are confronted with the long versions. You need to copy and paste those. And um, the numbers really express some relationship between the change sets. Like, like I say, uh, it's just numbers that are well. Certainly, there's an order to the numbering system, like a revision with the higher number has come after a revision with the lower number. And another thing is the distance between the numbers correlates to the similarity of the code. Like if you, are, if you have two change sets that have a revision number which are 10,000 uh, 10, numbers apart, that means the code you know, has evolved a lot. And you can just you learn that by one glance. That it's not at all possible with the hashes because they're just numbers. They're random. And so you can't even see anything from it. That's the basic reason why we want um, those hashes. And um, there was, we, we found a, a way to implement them, well, as lightweight tags in Git so you can really use the href hash um, name as a hash ID. It's similar. For every, everywhere you need to work with the change that in Git, you can use that tag. And um, well, at least the common idea is to, to tag only pushes. Like if a set of commits comes in, and then only the last of that uh, set, the last commit he had, is being um, gets a tag because only the intermediate uh, change sets can't really be checked out uh, from. I mean, like nobody who pulls from the Git repository can actually get that because you only get the last commit of a push I mean, and everything that was before that. Yeah, how to, how to deal with patches. Uh, the problem that we've seen is that currently there's a large, pretty, long, pretty large gap between the developers who have commit access and the developers who don't, or the one-b developers, haiku developers. And um, well, what usually happens is these guys get interested, they work on something, send patches. Most of these patches rot in our um, bug tracker. Well, some of them get worked on, others don't. <coughs> and especially if a patch is sitting in the bug tracker, it, you know, after some time it won't apply no longer because the code has been changed. And it's really difficult. And um, 
The one way to solve that with a distributed um, version control is to make use of the community websites basically that mm. allow you to um, get your own Haiku repository and uh, basically just follow um, the Haiku development and add your own patches there as well, change that really. Mm -hmm. You have your own repository. So you have, basically, you, have, you will have one um, tree of development follow, which follows the Haiku master. And, and then you will connect all your, how many branches, how many branches you, you will need for your work. And you can then ask, um, well, you can, we need to, make it possible that uh, people can ask anyone with commit access to the, the central repository um, to have a look at their repository. And then we can, well, fix up and we always have mechanisms to support that, like you can comment on change sets and you can say, oh, it's pretty okay, but it's static, static guide violations here and there, or whatever, you need to comment on. And then, of course, we can accept then the patches into our repository. So the hope is that it'll be well the hurdle to get involved into high development will be much uh, lower because people it's very easy to get a uh, repository and you can just work there. So you're not the exter external developers are no longer um, dependent on any internal developer picking up their patches, they can just continue the work. And I think that's pretty important.